What's up team, good morning. In today's video, we are actually going to be saying farewell to the R34 project. You guys haven't seen much of it, um, but we've got a guy coming up from, I think he's coming up from bloody Melbourne. So it's like, it's a pretty big drive. Like I'm pretty sure that would probably be about 10 hours worth uh, of trek. He's brought a car trailer, he's coming up to pick this thing up. He wants to give it a second lease of life, so, uh, on life. So, good on him. It's a big project, but I think the way i34s are going it's going to be a uh it's going to be probably a de half decent investment as long as he does it you know smart so we need to get that thing ready to get out of here hopefully i don't get bitten by a crazy spider but the main part of today's video that i wanted to film is something i've been trying to do for a couple of weeks uh it's actually you can probably see it in the reflection of my glasses the car that we're well it's our new daily i think someone here trying to see over my fence nope so uh this is our new daily guys i'm not going to spend too much time talking about it i'm just going to show you let's uh let's get into it This is a 2018 BMW M3 CS. So the CS is basically like the ultimate um, like race edition, the stripped back version of the M3 uh, for this generation. Basically, you don't get any of the creature comforts that you get in the normal, like the um, competition or the base model. So I'll run you through what that is in a second, but I guess before we actually get into the interior, I'll talk you through some of the outside, which you would have seen in that little montage. But basically, lose me thong. We have carbon roof. So the entire roof is made out of carbon fiber. The bonnet is actually a carbon weave as well. You can't see it on this side, but I'll pop the bonnet in a second. We'll be able to see underneath it. Uh, we have a carbon front lip, which a lot of people who have Beamers, um, they buy like lookalike or aftermarket versions uh, to try and make them look like these ones, which are the factory. The CS gets a special kind of wheel. So it's got 19 inch on the front. 20 inch on the rear. I think the tires, they're like, what are they? I think they're 295s. They're Pilot Sport Cup 2s in, where am I looking? 295, uh, 30, 20. The brakes are as big as your bloody head. We've got a carbon little rear wing lip thing. Carbon diffuser. The CS gets a, a unique exhaust. You guys will be able to hear it in a second. We are you've got like different valves in it. So you've got like efficient mode, which has like the valves are closed. So it's a bit quieter. And you've got the, um, the loud sport mode and sport plus mode where it opens right up. Excuse the mess guys, we've been driving this, this is our daily obviously. You've got a special CS interior. So this is where things, like for me, I really love this. Um, let's jump in it. Oh, so rather than the traditional M3s, they have a leather uh, steering wheel and leather highlights throughout the whole car, or leather interior I should say. We actually have uh, Alcantara. So steering wheel, Alcantara, we've got leather on the doors and some nice white stitching. But up on the dash here, it's all Alcantara. We've got the CS uh, emblem, which is pretty cool. It's nice looking at that. But something that kind of shocked me when I first jumped in it was it actually doesn't have a center console. It only has uh, basically this. And this is inspired by the DTM cars, which you know are stripped back. So 
when I say you lose some of the creature comforts, you don't, obviously don't have the storage of a center console. You also don't have climate control. There's no air con in the rear. So it just, there's nothing, you know, the normal vents in the back there, it comes out of the front, but it's not really a problem because it's pretty cool. Um, trying to think of what else is unique CS sort of stuff inside here. Just probably, probably forgetting a few things. The seats don't have lumbar support. You got these cool gaps in the seats so the kids can massage your back when they kick you straight through them. <laughs> um, but let's, uh, let's fire this thing up and I'll show you. Got a little red starter button on the CS, I think. Let's get some aircon pumping because it is cold. But this thing, guys, is actually an absolute animal. I might actually uh, pop the bonnet up and show you guys the weave underneath there. I'm gonna pull it twice. I'm actually really in love with the headlights as well. The way they look so angry when they lit up. You see this thing in the rear view mirror. And uh, yeah, you don't wanna sit there. I love the bulge too and the bonnet. It's like, you know, European muscle car. And that's actually the underside of the bonnet. So you got this, this weave, this carbon. It's crazy. Carbon fiber strut bar, strut roof, I should say. So you're into cooler. package and something I can definitely get used to looking at uh, as time goes on and definitely uh, modifying as well. The colour of this car is, uh, is San Marino blue so when Talani and I were looking for an M3 we really 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 wanted to get a San Marino blue car because through the camera it won't do it justice and if you haven't seen one of these cars in real life or well, this colour sometimes it's blue sometimes it's purple it's kind of in between. Midnight Purple 3 is my favourite colour on Skylines. Um, and this is like the closest I could get to it on a Beamer. It's just like, I've seen someone say it before, blue is ruined. I can never paint another car blue because it will never be as nice as this blue. Um, and just the contrast with the black highlights, the carbon stuff, it just looks unreal, man. It's so cool. Uh, but how about we have a talk about why we bought this as a daily because obviously this is a pretty, uh, pretty hectic car and totally overkill for anything that we need. Uh, and completely different from the Discovery too. So before we get into the uh, the details of this M3, I actually need to play a bit of car Tetris, move these cars around because the guy's gonna be here soon to pick up the R34. So we gotta move the BMW, move the 33 and get it out of there and change some wheels. So I'm gonna do that first and we'll get back into it. So we just sold uh, the 34, it's um, headed off now, which is pretty cool. The boys are really, really nice. They're actually filming it. So I'll find out what their channel is and I'll put a little link in here or in the description so that, um, you know, if you guys are interested in seeing a 34 GTT build, go and check that out. Uh, anyway, we're in the M3. So we're gonna go pick up the kids. We wanted to do a little bit of uh, filming while we're driving, obviously you not know, with the kids in the car and whatever. It's not gonna be anything outrageous, uh, but just wanted to run you guys through some of the cool features, I guess, of this. Um, so the biggest, like, jumping into this thing, the biggest mind-blowing thing to me is, like, with your skylines and all that sort of stuff, to change suspension settings, steering settings. Obviously, you've got to put new parts on the car, change everything like that. Um, you've got boost settings and whatever, but, you know, there's so much actual mechanical work involved to change how the car drives. With this, you've got these buttons down here. Get the camera down there. And these here, when you press them, they actually change settings uh, within the car itself and you can see, uh, I'll press the, the top one here, maybe on the dash, it might come up. So Sport Plus, efficient, Sport, is it the camera one I'm picking up? Yeah, Sport Plus, oh, it's my finger. All right, so see how it's highlighting there and if I press the, the next one, it's suspension. So you got three settings, usually comfort or efficient and Sport and Sport Plus. 
The steering one is really cool. It actually changes the ratios, I believe, and um, you can feel the steering get heavier. Uh, and then you've got these buttons on the steering wheel, which we can basically have like pre-programmed uh, settings to accommodate who you are as a driver. So number one, is like automatic mode. This is a dual clutch transmission, by the way, so it's got happy paddles. It's a manual, but it has an auto mode. Uh, D for drive, so Talani likes to drive it as an automatic, whereas I like to drive it as a manual. When I hit two, it gives me manual mode, or you can bump it across into like drive or again, manual mode. In drive, you got this button here. <laughs> I'm giving I'm giving Talani the run around here. This, this button here it changes how long it stays in gear for and how long it lets the revs go out before it changes across into, into gears. So I've got this, I drive it all the time in full sport plus all the time. Um, it changes the throttle position sensor as well and it opens up the valves on the exhaust, which you would have heard when I was revving it earlier for the, for the video before. So let's go for a little run. It's hot as in here, so I turn the con up. It's like second to none that I've experienced so far. So like my favorite handling cars, like air chassis, S2000s are a heap of fun. Um, 33 is not up there at all. Uh, I enjoy first gen RX-7s, but this thing just feels so balanced, kind of like an S chassis does. Um, you know, if you're driving like really light footed and you change gear, it's kind of lethargic to go into the next gear. Same with downshifts, like it'll just boom, drop down. But if you're sort of like into it, I don't know if you can hear it. It changes so quick. Now, I've never had a performance DCT car before. We've only had like Golfs or whatever, like little TSI things. Does that say Hecti? It's meant to say Hectic, right? Hecti. So even with all the assists on, and boy does it have assists, it still, still kicks and nearly sends the light out the window. <laughs> Thank you, wait, I was still zoomed in, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> When you don't have uh, all the traction control buttons off, also when you have it all turned off, this thing, it bags. I was driving through the city, I had my mate behind me. I turned it all off and I was like trying to get into launch control mode, which takes a little bit of getting used to and working out properly. When I did it, I didn't get it in launch control, so I basically just did like a clutch dump of a standing start, and I am like almost gutter to gutter in Mexico in uh, in traffic could not believe it so yeah it's crazy the torque it's a, so it's a three liter twin turbo inline six so it's staying close to the skyline uh, skyline routes but the torque in like fourth gear in this thing it's just so impressive um, it it's just it's completely different to any car I've ever had and it just goes to show how like a modern performance car blows like 90s technology out of the water and you know, I haven't had 1,000 horsepower cars or anything like that, so I'm sure they're completely different, but I'm assuming, and from talking to other people, you lose a lot of the drivability when you get to that point. So to have something that, this only has like, uh, I think it's like 430 or 440 horsepower at the wheel, at the crank, sorry. So it's probably only making like 380 horsepower at the wheels. This thing hammers, like it is quick. So we'll do a couple of little pulls on the highway soon. Um, Need some water because it's hot, it's like 32 degrees, and I've been talking a lot. So, welcome to the new beam of boys and girls. Mostly boys because girls don't watch this channel. <laughs> Discovery, which obviously you guys would see, we tow cars with it all the time. Um, we decided that we wanted to mix things up a little bit. I was getting a sore back from sitting in the seat so much. We did like 50,000 Ks in a year. And we wanted to get something a bit smaller, uh, sort of like an everyday driver. We love BMWs the way they drive, I think they're awesome. Um, but obviously older ones, they kind of played with issues. Here in Australia, like they're pretty rough on the cooling systems. 
So we were looking at like F uh, F30, uh, like just three series, like 328i or something like that. But the whole time, for years now, I've always wanted an M3. Talani finally came around to the idea of having a sedan. She's always wanted like hatches and stuff. Um, I think having the XR6 Durbo probably helped you a little bit mm. come around to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we, uh, we were talking about M3s and like looking at them. Basically, they're like, uh, we're talking about money now. They're like 80, really for like a, a later model one, like the LCI2, they're like what, 85 grand plus yeah. to like 120 for a, a competition, which is like, got the different suspension settings and it's been refined since the early base models and whatever, the cool seats. Uh, it had the really nice headlights, which is like the later model headlights, like how they got the really cool angry eye. We couldn't find one, especially in San Marino blue, which is this color. So we're looking at one, it was like 120 grand. It wasn't selling, but the guy wasn't really negotiable. Anyway, we were at a viewing of like a 328i, so like your normal BMW sort of thing. And I was like, I'm gonna call BMW in the city and just see if they have any M3s in stock because on the internet, on car sales, which is our like premier website for buying and selling cars, there was uh, no stock. I call them, the guy's like, uh, so have you got any San Marino Blues? He's like, oh, nah, well, we th I think we, we have one CS, but it's like the gray color. I think it's called mineral gray or something, a lime rock gray. And then we might have just traded a San Marino Blue CS. And I'm like sitting there at Talani, like she's like outside the car as you can hear on, on speaker on the Lear driver. I'm like, yeah, like that Jack Nicholson gif. And then Talani's like, no, because when he told us the price tag, it's like, uh, like 140 grand basically, which is just eye watering for us even now. And um, I'm like, yeah, because you know, we're gonna spend 100 grand anyway. The CS is, uh, like as I sort of went through it before and spoke about the carbon bits and whatever, there's actually only, I think it's like 1250 or something, CS's were made in the entire F80 M3 and they only made them for one year. Out of that, uh, I think 45 were delivered to Australia. And then I don't know the exact breakdown because I haven't found out yet, but in this color worldwide in right hand drive cars, uh, there was only 77 made. So worldwide, right-hand drive, let's say Australia got 10 of those. I don't even know if they did, but um, I only know of uh, two, I think I've seen, I think there's four cars I know of that are this color I've seen for sale. Two, yeah, and one in ours. And yeah, it's like four of these. So I reckon it's safe to say there's probably 10 or less of these in the entire country. So pretty special beast, we're all about getting off on that like having a unique car um, and so far it's been an awesome daily we've done like 5,000 k's in this thing in like two weeks so as collectible as it's going to be it's also going to be driven and uh, don't care I want to enjoy it for years to come unless we move somewhere else in which case it'll probably get sold but we'll buy another one what do you think same thing so that's a bit of the spiel about the M3 uh, but if you're considering buying an M3 and you're coming from the world of Jap cars, highly, highly, highly recommend uh, as a daily drive or a Sunday driver, just a bit of a weapon. Yesterday we went for a really nice drive in the countryside, up some really windy roads. I'm gonna go back there with GoPros and stuff because I think it'll make for really good footage. Um, yeah, this thing is awesome. And we can, with just a set of down pipes, some charge pipes, which are like intercooler piping, I think, uh, in a flash tune, which you can, it's crazy the tuning you can do it on your iPhone on these things because um, it's all cloud uh, crowd like source tuning this thing can be bumped up to like 550 horsepower at the wheels and like 750 newton meters of torque which is just mind-boggling because right now this is seventh gear and it like pulls like it comes on boost you can feel the torque in it fifth gear is enough to pull on cars at like 100 k's an hour and overtake and then fourth and third fourth is just mind-boggling it's amazing so can't wait to add another 150 horsepower anyway i feel like i've been talking for way too long we're gonna go pick the kids up we might actually uh end this video here guys we'll do a couple of pulls and try and get some stuff for you but i'll see you in the next one see you later r34 and hopefully we will be taking the m3 cs for a strap really soon thanks for watching peace